Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we will create an SSRS matrix report from A to Z, meaning we will learn the steps to think and write a complex query, create the matrix report using Report Builder, format the report, we will learn how to write code to format the report based on data, and then we will go into publish the report. I stumbled uh, through some logic issues with my query and report, but I left it in the video to present how I was able to get over it. Before watching, please remember to subscribe to my channel to help supporting it. So here's my uh, requirement. So my customer wants to see the uh, report that shows the sales of customer over years. So on the uh, row header, I want to see my years. And on my column, I want to see my customer and the intersection. I want to see my customer sales by year just to compare how my each of my customers are performing uh, through the years. So let's go and uh, write our uh, SQL statement. We have our customers table. So we're going to use this table to get our customer name and then we're going to link it to our invoice table. We're going to sum our invoice total. And we want to have on the heading our year. So uh, we're going to get only the uh, date part of my invoice date. So we're going to use the date part function, which uh, gets back the date part of the uh, date field that we have. We're going to give it a name. And we're going to group by my customer name and by uh, the year. Let me also give my customer name a good uh, heading. Okay, I'm just going to order by my customer and year as well, just to see how my data looks like. Okay, now I can see my first customer showing on the first four rows with the uh, date. I want this table to, or this result to be dynamic based on how many years my customer wants to present on the report. So I want just to decrease the number of years. So if the customer say four years, I want to go to 2020, 2019, 2018, and 2017. If he said three years, then I want to go only to 2018 and so forth. So I want to take this date part of my invoice and comparing to the date part of my current year, minus the number of years that the customer uh, wants to see. So I want to get the date part of this current year, 2020, and then based on how many years the customers want to see, I will go back to these number of years. So let me run this statement. Okay, so the customer wants four years. Seems like it works. So let's change this parameter and see how it goes. Mm, seems like it's still four years. Okay, so I'm going to take this part after the comparison and take it on a separate select statement to see why my logic is wrong. I'm going to run it on its own. And then, yes, it says 2015. So I just guess I need to instead of having minus one, just remove this. Okay, this goes actually five years back. So I want to say the number of years plus one. So, okay, I guess this works now. So mainly I want to decrease the, the parameters that the customer gave me by one and then subtract it from the current year. Now it looks good, so I'm going to take it and put it back to my SQL statement. 
Okay, so whenever it's one year, it shows 2020 only. Whenever it's four years, it goes back to 2017. And then when it's two years, go back to 2019. Now let's go and create my report. We're going to go to our uh, report server. We're going to create a new paginated report. If you have the report builder, then just use it right away. If you want to download it, just download it. We're going to create a new table and then we're going to create a new data set. I'm going to use a shared data set. If you want to learn how to uh, create your own data set, I have my SSRS video in five minutes, uh, which presents that you can go back and watch it. I'll use my Windows user and then I will edit as text to use my select statement that I created over here. I don't, need, I don't need really to copy my parameter. I'll just copy my select statement, which has the parameter and SSRS is going to auto create the parameter. We are going to test our uh, query over here. Works fine. So let's hit next to create the report. Now we're going to use or to select our groups. So uh, I want the year to be on the column side and I want to be, have my customer to be on the rows. And I want the variable to change on the intersection between rows and column B to be the sum of invoices. I'll hit next. And let's run our report. Okay, so it seems like our report is working, but we need to work on formatting it a little bit. So let's get our uh, columns wider. Just highlight the top of the column and then hover over the side of it. You'll be able to uh, highlight it. So I want to add a little bit of borders, so I'll right click on my text field, click on the preview side to add the border and choose gray. Now let's change our report title. And now I just want to change the background and uh, text color of my headings whether it's the column heading or the uh, row heading as well. So I'll change the background color and the font color of both of them. If you don't see the property span, then under the view menu, you can uh, check it to, uh, to see it. Now let's change the format of my uh, numbers. So I'll just right click on the text and then select the number formats. I don't need to do the same thing for all of them, so I will just copy the code for the format from one of them, hit control on my keyboard, and then select the rest. On the properties, I will scroll down to the format and then paste whatever format I received from the first column. Now let's test our report. So once we run our report, so uh, you're gonna see like it does not present any data. So it seems like we broke our report. But the thing is that Report Builder sometimes does not present data nicely for matrix. Sometimes it does, but a lot of times it doesn't. So we're going to save it. If your Report Builder is connected to the server, you can connect it to, you can save it to the report server right away. If not, then you can save it to your hard drive and then upload it. You can find the steps as well on my video in uh, create SSRS report in five minutes. Okay, so uh, let's run the report from our report server and see whether it's broken or not. So it doesn't seem like it's broken, so it's better format now. So uh, let's go back to our report builder and do more formatting on it. 
So mainly uh, one of my customers requirement is to show the years that any of my customers did more than $100,000. So I'm going to right click on my uh, data field like the sum of total invoice. I'm going to go to my background color and I will choose expression this time. I will use the IIF to write a condition that whenever this data set field, so I'll just go to my data set is greater than 100,000, then I will click on my constants and then I want it to show as green else I want it to remain as normal white. I'll do the same thing to the font, so I want my font to be red, so uh, I'll write the same formula, but then it's going to be red and black instead. So usually I don't memorize uh, or try to type the, uh, the constant, I just try to use the options that a report builder give for me. Okay, so running the report again from report builder might fail, but I just want to see whether the colors change or not. Seems like it's working. Let's go to a report server and run my report or refresh it to uh, see my formatted report. Okay, so now I can distinguish the customers that does better with me. So let's have our uh, parameter as a drop-down list because I don't want the customer to select like hundreds of uh, years. Like I don't want him to say like I want to see the last 16 years because that's not going to be able to uh, to be printable. Some customers don't care really about printing the report. So I'm going to say the default value is number four and the available parameters, I'm going to change it to specify value and then I'm going to give it a list of values. So first label is four years then the value is four years as well. So the value is the thing that's going to be passed to the report, but the label is whatever you're going to present for your end user. So in my case, like the label and the value is the same, but you could have changed like the label to say four years, three years, two years, doesn't matter. It's not gonna break the report. It's the value that matters really. Okay, so let's refresh my window and then let's rerun the report. Now you can see it's a drop down list. So let's run it as one year. I don't think really we need the total if we're running on one year. So maybe we can just write some code to remove the total. So I want to select the my column and then right click say the column properties. I'll select the show and hide and then I'll write a, a statement that says if the parameter is equal to one then false else true. Let's see whether this code runs or not. Doesn't seem to work. <laughs> Let me go back. Column visibility and then actually it is true when you say it's true then you say like yes I want to hide it when it's false then I don't want to hide it so it's the opposite so let's test the logic now okay it seems like it's working so let's select more than one year and see if the total does come up or not yes it does so it seems like we got the logic correct okay hopefully this is helping to understand a little bit more about matrix report if you found it helpful then please uh, 
like help our channel by subscribing to it and thanks for watching